flows um, and it flows into our own coffers and therefore we have as much responsibility as the, uh, uh, as the poorer countries uh, to try to curtail this phenomenon. In many cases, the methods used for paying less tax is almost impossible for developing countries to scrutinize. Transfer pricing is inherently complex, and the, the OECD model, which is the unfortunately perhaps the dominant model um, to work out what a fair price is for trade between two subsidiaries of the same multinational, um, that process is very complex. Now, what you find in a low-income country, um, uh, as Zambia was until recently, is that the capacity within the tax authority to deal with the complexity and to deal with the army of lawyers and accountants that a multinational company has at their disposal simply isn't there. So a multinational company like Glencore is able to resource um, their ability to defend a particular set of prices in a way that the Zambian tax authority finds extremely difficult to respond to. I, I've spent my whole career looking at this, and yes, I'm on the OECD Task Force on Tax and Development, um, but by and large, I find that the OECD is not interested, not interested at all in debating the broader subject. Their interest is in protecting their guidelines because OECD countries want to maintain the status quo. Glencore's history of legal problems are remarkable. In 1983, the company's founder, Mark Rich, fled the United States to avoid jail. The US authorities reacted promptly, putting him on FBI's top 10 most wanted list. He decided he didn't want to go to jail, he felt like he was above the law, and therefore he was going to do every he you know he had more money than anybody and he was going to do everything he could to try to you know to try to beat this mark rich because of his flight from the united states became the most wanted white collar criminal in american history <laughs> 